What's the I'm going to tell you a Pensick war story. I'm going to tell you about the night Pensick 20 almost got away from me when I was the autocrat. Now, it was my habit when I was the autocrat, and I had to do something unpleasant, to take along a neutral member who was not on my staff to be a witness. Choices. This is a good choice, usually. I made two mistakes. I went down to Vlad's camp after dark. That is a mistake. <laughs> and I took Anton, the King of Atlantia. Oh. Now, I like Anton, the King of Atlantia. <laughs> well, he, he had been a that. tremendous help to me all the all week. He'd been hauling stones and getting money and doing work and things. I thought, well, this will be a nice challenge. <laughs> and it hadn't occurred to me, and it should have, because I'm not stupid, that Vlad would be drunk. <laughs> so that when I told him to put his candles in glass, he told me his tent was fireproof. And I said, no, it isn't, and don't make me prove it. <laughs> because I can. And he got in my face. Profanely. To an extent that it bothered even me, the city girl. He called me something I find deeply, deeply offensive. And I was literally quaking with the desire to choke the life out of the SOB. When I swear to goodness, Anton appeared between us in a puff of smoke. <laughs> I said, you will not talk like that to this lady, sir. <laughs> and I thought, oh dear, he's punched his southern button. <laughs> Anton's going to hit him. And Anton was going to hit him. And for a moment, I let myself <laughs> contemplate that. <laughs> and then said, no, Anton, we're going up the hill. No, I'm, no, we're going up the hill. I'll let you drive the golf cart. <laughs> I could drive the golf cart. You could drive the golf cart. Well, okay. So I gave him the keys, and we're driving up the hill. I don't know about anyone else, but when I am deeply, deeply frustrated because I want to choke the life out of somebody, and I can't, my eyes tear up. Oh, thing. And a cheer rolled down my cheek. Oh no. And Anton saw it and was convinced that the delicate flower of my womanhood had been insulted. <laughs> so he drove over to the big White House, which at that time was where Mac and Betty and Ken Cooper lived. I can't remember if Dave was married on Pensick 20 or not. And Ken was coming out to go to work at the troll booth. And Anton parked the car and got out and said to him, Mr. Cooper, sir, I need to talk to your father. And in a voice that's sort of like, are you out of your mind? Ken said, Dad's asleep. And Anton said, wake him up. And Ken looked at him and said, wake up, Dad. In the sort of voice that you say when you, somebody says, jump off that cliff. He said, I must talk to you, sir. And he puts his arm around Ken and takes him over to the side of the so I don't have to hear those vile words again. I said, okay, it's fine. Ken's going to calm him down, explain to him that this is just a thing that happens and we're going to be fine and it'll be all right. I don't have to worry. And Ken said, I'll go get Dad. Oh, wait. <laughs> and Ken's in the house already. Oh, no. I don't want to wake Mac up for nothing. And Mac comes out, button in his shirt, and flips his hands on and says, what's this all about? I said, Mr. Cooper, sir, I have to tell you something that happened. Someone has insulted Morgana. And Mac said, oh, really? Kind of like that. And it occurred to me suddenly that Mac considered me a member of his family. Oh. And that time put his arm around Mac and took him over to the side <laughs> to tell him the nasty words. And I thought, well, at least Mac is the level-headed patriarch of the family. It's going to be fine. Everything will be okay. And Mac turned around and said, Ken, get the shotgun. Coming <laughs> <laughs> down. And I allowed myself one brief moment <laughs> to think no jury in Butler County would convict him. 
Secret? If you killed Vlad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't, no, 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 Mash, Anton, no, we can't do this. So I ran over and hooked an arm through each of their arms and said, let's go in the house and have a beer and talk this over. And Anton said, in the house? I could go in the house? <laughs> yes, Anton, you can go in the house. We'll go in the house. We'll all go in the house. Max said, well, maybe that's a good idea. Morgan, I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll talk it over, Mac. It'll be all right. So I sat them down and got the beer because I knew where it was. We're sitting at the kitchen table having a beer and Anton's looking around. Mm -hmm. I'm in the house. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the right attitude to have at that time. This what? looks like my grandparents' house. <laughs> and I said, yeah, did you expect it to be gold-plated? He said, well, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after about... 20 minutes of talking and drinking beer. We convinced everybody that it would be best to wait till morning and let Dave handle it. So I drove back to, back to his camp, dropped him off, went back to my camp, had another beer, much better beer. Matt drank Miller Lite. Yeah. Uh, and figured, okay, Dave is going to handle this. And Dave did handle it. Dave found out from somebody that the one person on Earth Land was actually afraid of was, for some reason, unknown to me, Laurel and Dart Spain. Oh. oh. Laurel is not a big man, no, physically. No. He really isn't. He's about, what, five, six, five, seven? Yeah. And skinny. Just skinny. Until he gets angry, in which case. Yeah. But he's very strong, at least at that time he was. Yeah. Ben yeah. 20, if you remember. And so he bursts into Vlad's camp, picks him up by the front of his tunic, and walls him against a tree. Nice. And says, you stupid fool, you know how close you are to being dead. <laughs> Matt Cooper wants to kill you. <laughs> and this gave Vlad pause. <laughs> As it should. <laughs> because it probably occurred to him that no jury in Butler County <laughs> would convict the deacon of his church <laughs> for using words like that to a woman. And he said, what do I have to do? You have to do whatever Morgana told you to do in the first place, and then you better apologize to her a lot. <laughs> and you better mean it. <laughs> because the whole Cooper family is out for you right now. And that's not a safe place to be, trust me. So Vlad drove into town and bought big aquariums and put his huge banks of candles in the aquariums. And then politely, apologizing all the while, invited me down to his camp to see what he had done. And frankly, I think they looked better. It was very pretty and the lights reflected and it was very nice. And I said, okay, that's fine. You could have saved yourself a lot of trouble by doing this in the first place. <laughs> he said, I'm really sorry. No, I'm sorry. Really, I am. I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. I don't let them hurt me. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm beginning to get the idea that you're sorry, but I'm really sorry, Morgan. Yes. <laughs> For the next three days, every time I saw him, I'm really sorry, I'm right Okay. <laughs> but at that day, as I went back up the hill in my golf cart, I ran into Al Cooper, who was driving the front loader. He stopped, put the brake on, got out, and came over to the golf cart and said, Morgana, I heard what happened. If you want, I'll go down and take care of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, I allowed myself a brief moment to visualize Vlad's tent flying across Highway 79. <laughs> uh, propelled by the front loader. <laughs> it was a lovely vision. But I said, well, Al, I think Dave has it handled. He said, okay. But if he ever says anything to you again, you tell me and I'll take care of it. And I said, all right. <laughs> because no jury in Butler County. <laughs> and that was the night the Pensick 20 almost got away from me. <laughs> <laughs>